spent some years, uh, I have been looking after um, lymphedema patients in the outpatient uh, setting. And uh, some of the questions that are raised frequently by these uh, patients are the things that I have been also uh, giving a lot of thought into. And uh, every time I come across these questions, uh, I try to find out what the right way to address these issues or concerns. And today I would like to uh, look into these questions once again with you. Uh, a lot of people are concerned uh, after being diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, and they are uh, afraid and concerned uh, about their risk of developing lymphedema. And they heard that once they develop uh, lymphedema, it's going to be, be very difficult for them uh, to cure and overcome that uh, disease. And uh, they are concerned by the fact that they might have to wear a stocking, and they might have to uh, care and uh, treat to this uh, for the rest of their lives. And uh, nevertheless, they also want to lead a very active life uh, despite uh, this uh, medical condition. And they want to predict uh, these uh, symptoms and explain the symptoms in a better way. And uh, I hope that uh, by uh, trying to address and uh, uh, explain uh, the uh, the state more accurately. This might be of help to the uh, patient community. So, how much should you worry about? Some people uh, uh, talk about sentinel lymph node and uh, removing one or two of them. Uh, searches on the internet and uh, are are uh, excessively worried about their state and reluctant to do any physical exercises and uh, depressed. So at the time of diagnosis of uh, breast uh, cancer, you will have to look back into how many uh, lymph nodes, sentinel lymph nodes were affected. So uh, during the uh, neoadjuvant chemo or uh, after surgery, uh, have you experienced edema in uh, the affected breast? during uh, chemotherapy. And uh, some people do not know if they have uh, gone through a SLNB or not, uh, a lymph node uh, dissection or not. And so if so, uh, how many lymph nodes were removed at what level? And uh, how many of the lymph nodes were uh, affected by cancer cells? So that's going to be a, a good starting point uh, of assessing the data that's relevant to you. And uh, during the radiotherapy, some people have radiation therapy only on uh, the uh, breast, but also some people have radiation therapy up to uh, their axillary. So depending on which areas have been exposed to radiation, the lymphedema can manifest in a different way. And uh, some people have uh, this uh, drainage uh, system after the surgery for a long time, uh, sometimes for a short time, and also for the body mass, for the body mass, uh, how much fat uh, layer um, you have underneath uh, your skin uh, is also uh, has a link with uh, the risk of uh, lymphedema. So you might want to calculate uh, or measure the risk of uh, your lymphedema after an axillary lymph node dissection. So you don't have to be excessively worried, uh, or you should not overlook uh, neither uh, the risk of uh, developing a lymphedema. Uh, so this is something that's already uh, that belongs to the past. Uh, so chemotherapy, radiation therapy, uh, surgery, that all, that, uh, all, that all belongs to the past. So depending on uh, what happened in the past is already past, but how you uh, lead your day-to-day -day life uh, has uh, is something that you can work on. So some people have a swollen fingers and hands, and uh, some people after radiation therapy, after removal of many uh, lymph nodes every day, thanks to a, a very a good management. Uh, rhythm, uh, some people lead a very healthy uh, life. So uh, depending on how well uh, this lymphatic uh, transport capacity and the lymph lo uh, lymphatic load is balanced, you are uh, and will be able to lead a healthy life. And uh, so if you think that you are at risk of developing a lymphoma, or if you are suffering uh, from lymphoma, this is something that I would like to recommend. Uh, so a, it's not a uniform diagnosis, uniform uh, treatment uh, recommendation. Each pa patient is different, so you might want to map your arm. 
And uh, so uh, s some of the veins are uh, common to uh, most of us. It goes up, the veins uh, go up uh, to the axillary. So this is the main pathway. And apart from this, uh, we have uh, from uh, the uh, top of your uh, hand uh, to uh, the triceps and up to uh, the neck. So that's uh, the major uh, route or the pathway. So that's what we call that's what we call the expressway. And so we have these different types of pathways or expressways, and the swelling is not something that's totally unpredictable. Uh, so uh, you can more or less predict where uh, the, swelling, the swelling will take place. And you would like to see uh, how you might want to drain or find the right drainage uh, pathway according to uh, each individual case. Uh, and uh, so I would like to give you some tips. First, uh, depending on your movement or your different levels of activities, uh, there are uh, some uh, areas of your body that might have some kind of symptoms, and don't overlook them. So, for instance, after surgery, even if you are just sitting or standing still, uh, sometimes you might have a very uh, unpleasant uh, tingling sensation. And apart from that, right after the surgery itself, that has to do with new, uh, new uh, nerves and not with a lymphoma, a lymphedema. Uh, but, uh, for instance, if you are trying to lift something, you feel a very heavy feeling, something that's not very heavy, uh, but uh, you feel a, a kind of a disproportionate um, discomfort, for instance. You might want to find that area. Sometimes it manifests on the top of your uh, um, hand or around uh, your elbow. So you might want to draw these areas uh, that you think are affected most by this uh, sensation of discomfort. So some people would uh, feel the sensation here, as you can see, on different areas of the arm. And so you will have to look for the areas where uh, your arm will be affected most. And once you find uh, the symptoms and where they are uh, manifested, that's where usually uh, the drainage uh, will be blocked. Uh, because uh, the block, uh, the 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 points where the, uh, the drainage will be blocked, and this will cause the fluid to build up. And uh, lymphocytography is uh, uh, was carried out in uh, uh, a healthy individual. I don't know if you can see well. And uh, this is uh, the arm, and this is uh, the chest. We, uh, after a contrast agent is administered, after five minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes, if uh, something so that uh, goes up uh, to the axillary, for instance, for people who did not uh, go uh, undergo a surgery, you see that uh, the circulation is carried out without any hindrance. Whereas uh, for people who have undergone a surgery, uh, from the hand up to the axilla, uh, that's where you can see that there is a kind of bottleneck or a blockage. So uh, if you look at just one valve or node, when uh, this node is expanded, that's where you will feel this numbness or soreness. And uh, so if you look at uh, the areas that you feel this sensation uh, would mean that uh, there is an expansion or enlargement of the lymph node. So the lymph nodes are present uh, within the nerve, on the top of the nerve, or uh, also we have what we call the capillary plexus within the skin. And if this road is blocked, uh, the vessels uh, will be affected, and so that will lead to a sensation of a swelling or numbness, and that will be the uh, initial stage of uh, lymphedema. And uh, sometimes it gets better uh, after a certain uh, amount of rest uh, or sleep. And. So, so some people might think that you could just leave those symptoms, and once you uh, take enough uh, rest, it, you will come back to a better state. But let's look at a balloon. Uh, if you expand a balloon, uh, uh, for the first several times, it will come back to its normal state. But as uh, it repeats, 
expansion, it will not uh, go back to its initial stage. So by this analogy, you might want to uh, go after um, more healthy patterns. So once uh, this uh, uh, vessel is expanded, the transport capacity will be reduced. So the lymphatic load, uh, the amount that uh, this can carry uh, will be reduced. And as a result, uh, this vessel will, from a normal state will go through a contraction, expansion, and then after that, contraction, and ultimately hardening. Uh, so for approximately a, a, a week, you might want to note or jot down everything that you do uh, on a given day, from morning to nighttime to bedtime, what you have done, what you have not done, and for how many minutes, uh, and how the symptoms were related to each and every one of these activities. You might want to record um, uh, these activities. And this has to be specific to you and not to others. For instance, other people might uh, feel uh, no discomfort after carrying a, a very heavy uh, object, for instance, uh, and that might be not be true for you. But if there are some common tips uh, that uh, we might want to share, is uh, putting a lot of strain on your hands, for instance, um, it's okay to cook, uh, but uh, if you are a professional chef, uh, you know how to uh, use your fingers, right? But if you are not a, a specialist and you try to mimic or imitate uh, such a, a hand movements, uh, it might put excessive strain on your hands. Uh, you, uh, in this instance, so you can use make use of these uh, other uh, utensils or. Um, uh, uh, kitchen uh, tools and machinery that will help you instead of using your fingers. And for people, and uh, if you have to carry a lot of heavy uh, objects, for instance, or if you walk uh, uh, 10,000 steps a day, uh, and for instance, if you can uh, hold your uh, arm up while walking, if that helps, that could be helpful. And for people who have to sit in their office uh, all day long, you will have to uh, stretch, especially your shoulders from time to time. Yoga or Pilates, um, uh, do not uh, try to th do this uh, by uh, exercising excessive strain on your arm or your fingers just because other people are doing uh, so. And uh, the therapy and the management to practice that you are currently adopting, is it helpful to you? Uh, for instance, uh, I, go, I receive massages or I uh, use uh, compression garments, arm sleeves. Uh, some people, uh, even if they use arm sleeves or, or compression bandages, uh, the next morning uh, their state or uh, their um, swelling will be even av aggravated. So you will have to really evaluate whether what you are doing is really helping you or not. So the, is the volume, and not only the volume, but lymphedema, uh, the rate in the beginning will be slowed, and then uh, the change will take place, uh, uh, and uh, ultimately it will lead to a sclerosis or a hardening. So for people who experience a very uh, serious uh, uh, swelling, you will have to examine whether the, the sclerosis or the hardening has softened uh, a little or not. So gradually, step by step, you will have to take a closer attention uh, to the little changes that are taking place. And uh, these are the capillary uh, vessels. And uh, so this is uh, the massage or the manual lymphatic uh, drainage. Uh, is it really going to help you as an individual feel better? Uh, and of course, uh, ex exercising pressure is good, but uh, applying the right uh, amount of pressure is important because after uh, applying uh, pressure, sometimes uh, you might experience a worsening of uh, the swelling on uh, the shoulder or on the hands. So maybe uh, depending 
uh, on uh, the state uh, you are in. Rather than uh, getting these massages, you might want to maybe lose uh, some weight to help uh, uh, your lymphoma. So lymphoma is not an individual uh, disease as such. So uh, depending on the different levels of uh, the lymphoma manifestation, you will have to uh, consider different interventions. And also, if you will have to look at your entire body and not just uh, the part that's affected. Uh, so if you are affected by uh, lymphoma, some instances, you will just look at your arm or your hand all day long. But especially for people who are uh, affected by lymphoma, you will have to look at your whole body and uh, you will have to do uh, exercises that will help, uh, help your entire body uh, systemically and what's good for your heart. So a systemic exercise and the adequate amount of intensity is something that is very important to determine. Uh, an intensity that will not uh, provoke or induce uh, lympho uh, lymphedema. So uh, usually you might uh, think that a high exercise intensity uh, should be good for lymphedema. But if you are, have lymphedema or are at risk of developing lymphedema, uh, you will have to find the appropriate amount of intensity, the level of intensity. Uh, or uh, lifting something excessively heavy uh, abruptly can be uh, very uh, bad for you. And if you are, if the respiration is right, so, so extrinsic uh, lymph pump and uh, the muscles surrounding the lymph nodes, uh, you will have to stimulate all of these uh, nerves and muscles. To conclude, how to lead a healthy life with the symptoms of a lymphedema. If you're interested in that, uh, consider these symptoms as a very sophisticated and delicate sensor that will allow you uh, to find a safer and a more healthier uh, regimen on a day-to-day -day basis. So by doing that, uh, lymphedema should not be something that's too stressful for you, or rather it should be something that will help you uh, get a better and lead a healthier life. Thank